protests by a group called the Revolutionary Youth happening for a sixth day in a row, though these protests have been going on for several weeks. These protesters filled with young men demonstrating against the worsening conditions in the Gaza Strip and really protesting against Israel. There are fears that these demonstrations will go back to what we saw in 2018 that lasted for quite some time, years in fact, known as Al Auda, the March of Return. But this is simply a smaller scale situation. Today, we heard four of four injuries. We saw smoke all along the border as these demonstrators lit tires on fire. As part of the demonstration, Israeli forces returning fire in the forms of tear gas, stun grenades, and in some cases, live ammunition. We saw yesterday some of the Israeli fire actually hit a number of demonstrators, nine injuries yesterday, and one of them, a fatal shot to the head. The Israeli security apparatus still on high alert as these protests continue. Benita. We're also hearing in recent hours the United Nations Special Coordinator for the Middle East Peace Process, Tor Venesland, expressing his concern about the violence in the past day. He is calling for restraint in the West Bank, working with all sides, he says, to reverse this negative trajectory. Tell us more about the reaction to the latest developments in recent days. Well, look, over the last 24 hours, six Palestinians have been killed throughout the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, all by Israeli forces. The international community is quick to respond when instances of violence happen like this, fearing that it could lead to larger escalation. Let's not forget, in the last 12 months, we have seen barrages of rocket fire coming in from different parts. We've seen from the Gaza Strip makeshift rockets from the West Bank and even coming in from southern Lebanon. Now, Israel is fearing that the tensions will escalate However, at this time, it's seeming that we won't really be on alert for rockets. But the United Nations uh, special envoys are always concerned that when there are escalations of violence, it will result in civilian casualties. So at this time, both sides are remaining on high alert as the people brace for what's next in the ongoing cycle of violence. Benita. Pedestrian crossing in that region was closed in recent days. What is the latest update on that front in terms of people being able to get in and out of the Gaza Strip. Well, look, some 17,000 workers who cross into Israel regularly from the Gaza Strip are not able to do so. And tomorrow that crossing will be closed again. This is a huge problem for the economy in Gaza, where most of the population lives under poverty. And that money is a necessity to flow into the economy there to try and help the worsening living conditions that are there. So without that money that flows in day in and day out, people aren't able to provide for their families and put food on the table. Something that the protesters are also demonstrating against now is the closure of this crossing, hoping that it will remain open. However, Israel is saying that because of these demonstrations, it will remain closed. Palestinians see this as a form of collective punishment because a lot of the people in the Gaza Strip are simply just trying to live, trying to cross into Israel every day to make a living to bring back to their families. So the cycle continues and these protests don't really seem to be letting up as the revolutionary youth continues right. to call for revenge against Israel, Benita. A complicated situation indeed, as always. Thank you so much, Correspondent Hamza Sahut, live from the Israel-Gaza border. And if you want more great content like that from I-24 News, just hit the subscribe button. It's as easy as that.